Hey, welcome to the Jim Wolf Show. You know, it's the worst feeling in the world to be with someone but feel all alone. A few years ago, I was dating the person that I really wanted to be with most. And before I started actually having a relationship with her, I thought that would make me happy. And I remember one day I was sitting in our living room with her, this person that I really wanted to be with, this really cool girl uh, who was my girlfriend at the time. And we were sitting there together and I just remember feeling so lonely. And it was absolutely terrifying because I was like, well, geez, if this isn't making me happy, then what will? And I didn't feel fulfilled at all. And so we broke up a little bit after that. And now she's actually married and has a child and I'm really happy for her because she's awesome. Uh, this issue had nothing to do with her at all. And even after we broke up, I didn't really even know exactly what was wrong with me. And that was one of the most frustrating things about it is I knew something was wrong, but I didn't even know what it was. It was just kind of this sometimes dull, sometimes intense kind of painful feeling in my stomach of like not feeling complete and feeling like something was missing and feeling lonely. Even when I was with people, even when I, even when I was with the person that I wanted to be with, I still felt a sense of lack. Like it wasn't good enough or, you know, maybe I needed more. Maybe there was someone else I should be with. And it was an awful feeling. And maybe you can relate. I hope not. And so I still didn't know what was wrong. And a few months after that, um, Tiger Woods had his little scandal. And I was flipping through the cable television channels. I don't know why I don't do that anymore. I don't even have cable now, but I used to watch the news. And by the way, it's a really good habit to break. If you watch the news right now, stop doing that. Uh, try listening to a personal growth podcast every morning instead. Um, just watch what happens to your life. But anyway, I was sitting there in my chair, kind of still feeling this sense of lack inside me and it was a break so I had a lot of time to myself to think about all this stuff. Um, I was off work for that week and so I just I felt so crappy inside and again I still didn't know exactly what was wrong and so watching the cable news channels I'm flipping through and pretty soon I come to a psychologist discussion of what happened with Tiger Woods and just like you probably, I'm really interested in human psychology. I think it's fascinating and who knows what you can learn from someone like that. And so I tuned into this interview um, with a psychologist on one of the cable news channels and they were asking him about the Tiger Woods scandal and they were like, hey, do you think Tiger Woods is a sex addict? And the psychologist had an interesting answer because it was something that I haven't ever heard about before. And he said, no, I don't think Tiger Woods is a sex addict. And there's a lot of debate over whether or not that's actually a real thing or not. But the psychologist said, I think that Tiger Woods is a love addict. And that phrase kind of hit me right away and it started rattling around in my brain. And he said, if he was just interested in sex, he wouldn't try to maintain relationships with all these women because he was texting them and kind of like getting upset if they didn't respond and those kind of behaviors. And so the psychologist thought Tiger Woods was a love addict. And I was like, huh, love addict, love addiction. I wonder if that's what's wrong with me. Maybe I have that. And you know, I've kind of thought that about a few things before. In fact, for a little while, I thought I might actually just be completely crazy. I didn't really even know what was wrong. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll check into it more later. And then a couple of days later on my computer, I looked up love addict. And I think the definition was on like Wikipedia or something like that. And all of the symptoms felt kind of like right to me. A lot of times before I've looked up something and it kind of resonated, but it kind of didn't. And I'm like, oh, I probably don't have that. Dang, that's not my issue. I don't know how to solve it still. But this time, everything kind of lined up and I was like, wow, maybe I do have that. And so I started looking for resources on how to deal with love addiction. And when I typed love addiction into either Google or Amazon, I came across a book called Facing Love Addiction by Pia Melody. And I ordered the book 
and it was due to come in like three to five days or whatever and in the meantime I was getting actually kind of excited even though I might have this issue because perhaps this book would kind of deliver me from that maybe it would be the solution and so I was kind of nervous and kind of excited to see what this book had in store for me and I was really hoping that it would give me some value and that maybe it would answer my questions and so finally the book arrives and I went to my mailbox and picked it up and I brought it inside and I started reading it and once I started reading it the reality of who I was started hitting me like thousands of arrows both painful and true and hopeful that maybe a solution could be had and I, I just couldn't understand how the author of the book, I didn't understand how Pia Melody could write Facing Love Addiction without interviewing me because it described me to a T and I was like, wow, this is my issue. I am a love addict and I couldn't put that book down. I finished it all in one night and I was like, wow, that's so crazy. And in that book, Pia talked about the kind of larger problem that manifests itself in one way as love addiction and in a lot of other ways as a lot of different things and that's codependence as she calls it or codependency as some people call it and so I was like okay I'm a love addict and possibly a codependent and so I ordered another book by Pia Melody called um, Facing Codependence and this book was great Facing Love Addiction and Facing Codependence by Pia Melody are two of the books that started turning my life completely around. They're two of the top five books that have changed my life. And in that book, Facing Codependence, Pia Melody says that it takes about five years to kind of recultivate a good relationship with yourself and to kind of recover from codependent behavior patterns. And so I said, okay, if it takes five years, I know what my problem is. I know there's kind of a solution to it. And so I'm going to give myself that five years to just work on myself and work on this issue and recover from it and to resolve this issue for myself so that I feel better inside and so that I could treat other people better and so that I could have the kind of relationships that I want. And so I gave myself that five-year window and right now I'm right at the end of year five and I can't even believe the kind of person I am now versus the kind of person I was then and I'm really proud of myself for going on this journey and I hope that I can share some stuff that I've learned with you that you might be able to take whether you're whether you identify as a codependent person or not I am very into general personal growth as well and so I hope I can help you on your path wherever you are and whatever your issues happen to be but facing love addiction and facing codependence represented the first time in my life that I felt completely understood and I knew exactly what my issue was and that was a really great feeling to me and so in facing codependence Pia Melody says that codependence is a damaged relationship with the self that's the gist of what codependence or codependency is it seems like it's relational because it affects how you interact with other people but really it's kind of a damaged relationship with yourself and so what I've learned after the last five years of doing personal growth and working on these issues is that even when you're in a relationship with someone, your kind of internal happiness still comes down to you and your relationship with yourself. And I think that's a really hard thing to learn, but it's one of the most rewarding things ever to grow within yourself. And the thing is, if you don't feel whole and complete within yourself, and if you don't have a great relationship with yourself, no amount of external trappings, including an ideal partner or a nice car or a nice house or more money or whatever it is that's external to you can ever fill that void. And I think it's bad to try to fill that void inside yourself with anything external. And I also think it's even worse to try to fill that with another person because that's a human being that has their own life and it's not cool to kind of ask them to fill that part of yourself that isn't complete because they can't do it 
And the thing is, even if they can for a while, let's say that you're in a relationship with someone and you feel really good for those first couple of months or a couple of years or whatever it is uh, when you're in that kind of honeymoon phase and you're like, wow, this is awesome. At the end of the day, once that honeymoon phase is over, they're not going to be enough still for that hole that you have inside yourself. You're still going to have to go back and work on yourself. That's all there is. And relationship researchers have actually found that over the long term after that kind of honeymoon period that I just talked about goes away, your own self-esteem is one of the strongest predictors of your relationship satisfaction. So in the long term, it always comes down to just you and your relationship with yourself. Now I want to read to you the five core symptoms of codependence that Pia Melody talks about in Facing Codependence. And if any of these things resonate with you or any part of this talk resonates with you, I highly recommend getting Facing Codependence and if you need to, Facing Love Addiction. I think Facing Codependence is kind of her flagship product and it probably covers everything from love addiction to other things that fall under codependence or codependency. So Facing Codependence, start with that one if you resonate with any of these things or this talk. So according to Pia Melody, the five core symptoms of codependence are that codependent people have difficulty, number one, experiencing appropriate levels of self-esteem. That was definitely an issue for me. Number two, setting functional boundaries. Number three, owning and expressing their own reality. That one was really hard for me for a long time. I kind of wanted to please everyone and not really make too many waves and so a lot of times I wouldn't own or express my reality and sometimes I wouldn't even know what it was because I was so far into this. Number four, taking care of their adult needs and wants. That's something that I used to neglect a little bit on a lot of things I did take care of myself and a lot of things I didn't and that's something that's definitely improved a lot in my life. And number five, experiencing and expressing their reality moderately and that was definitely a little bit of an issue for me as well so if you resonate with any of those things I highly recommend picking up facing codependence by Pia Melody or facing love addiction loneliness is the feeling of being disconnected from others you can be surrounded by a lot of people or be in a relationship with someone and still feel lonely. On the other hand, you can also feel connected to other people when you're alone. Once you don't always feel lonely when you're alone and when you're with people you don't feel lonely, then you'll know that you're ready for a healthy relationship with someone else. Once you love your inner world and your inner experience of life so much you can hardly stand it, then you can go out and share it with everyone else. Then you can start relating more deeply with others. Then you can have that relationship that you want. So can you sit alone and feel happy, satisfied, and fulfilled? Are you comfortable with that? If not, I've been there for sure. The resources exist to help you on your way. You can do something about it. Start with the Jim Wolf Show episodes on self-worth and self-love and order Pia Melody's books, Facing Codependence and Facing Love Addiction. If you related to anything in this talk, I hope you take that one step and that you work on your relationship with yourself and then in a couple years from now, you can't believe how happy and fulfilled you are. And so I wish you the best. I hope you can't relate to this talk, but if you do, there's definitely hope. I turn it around and you can too. Thanks for listening to The Jim Wolf Show. For more content like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel or in iTunes, or go to my website, jamesdwolf.com. That's jamesdwolfwithane.com. If you think this content can benefit others, please share it or leave a five-star rating or review in iTunes so other people can easily find it. Cheers.